here we are still in Hastings. We're going to be here all day. There's, there's <laughs> food, there's art, there's friends. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's a big party. It's a big party vibe here. And I'm here with Michelle Morello. Okay, Michelle Morello. Michelle Morello has a podcast about Hastings, and uh, the content is based on a lot of old newspapers that she finds, uh, where she finds on the internet, library, microfilm, whatever. And out of those, she puts incredible podcasts about the history of Hastings. Now, you're also based in D.C., are you? Uh, I work for WTOP Radio out of Washington, D.C. Oh, so I've been a capital. 30 year radio journalist. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Well, yeah, we we're going to ask you that. So, your background is radio? Yes. Okay, so podcast, yeah. Yeah, it made, it made perfect and uh, news. I've yeah, been working in yeah, news yeah, for 30 yeah. years. I grow lettuce, why not cauliflower? Mm. Exactly. Know? Right, right, right. And what I got into it because I knew some of the folks doing the Hastings redevelopment. Okay. And I was fascinated by their Main Street concept and bringing the history back. I've been a living historian for over two decades doing everything from re Revolutionary War to pirate time periods, all kinds oh, of things. Right. I dress up a lot. So this uh, is... Oh, you're this a is, actor yes. also. So this oh. is the most modern I've been in a while. The That's 40s was very modern. Yes, yes. And so... I was going to ask you, when you do reenactments, any period that you saw or do you cover? I focus on pirates, okay. actually. So, so late 16 and early yeah, 17, late 16. 16 My very specific focus is on Port Royal, Jamaica and the sinking of the, the pirate city in an earthquake. Okay. So that's, I do historic presentations. Okay. And so now your background is journalism mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you're doing radio now, of course. But uh, do you have a residence here? In, in I do. I'm on Federal Point, which was the original kind of oldest area here because it was accessible by water. Okay. So in the late 1800s, Federal Point already had some homes before Hastings was even developed. Oh, wow. Um, because they, steamships were going up so and down the like river. A settlement, a little settlement. There was a couple of families owned almost all of that area. And then over time started selling bits and pieces off and, mm. so, and then the growth yeah. happened from the land side as well. So right. that was from the waterfront. So right. you had stops in Palatka, Federal Point and so on and so forth up and down the river. Okay. Um, and then in the late 1800s when Henry Flagler wanted all that fresh produce for his hotels that he was building up and down the East Coast, he sent his cousin right. to Hastings where he developed over 1,500 acres wow. into land. Uh, now, he farmland. had to drain this land because it was like swamp land. He did. There was a lot of work done. So he got done. it really cheap. I yep. think he bought it from the federal government or something like yep. that? Yep. They were, they were giving, if you yeah, were doing exactly. development, yeah. it, was, it was almost giving it away. It, it's almost like New York City giving the brownstones for a dollar. <laughs> in the 70s. If you know? you'll fix it up, we'll give yeah. it to you for a yeah, buck. That's right. kind of what was happening, right. is if you can develop this and yeah. do something useful. Yeah. And for Flagler, he was building railroads. Yeah, cattle, pigs, chickens, mm -hmm. whatever, you know, because agrarian, we were an agrarian society. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I silenced my phone, but not my, <laughs> not your my watch. watch. Yeah, pretty soon I have to silence my my head. But um, going back on that now, yeah. So they were giving the land away, and I guess it was he wanted to supply his hotel business that was going on. In he St. was building resorts, not just St. Augustine. He was building them down up and down the East Coast, and you know sometimes produce, especially good produce, was hard to find. So he called his cousin in and said, "Hey, why don't you go develop all this land?" and you start growing the fresh produce for me so I have the best food around. Mm -hmm. And the cousin did just that. He's put 1,500 acres out here, built a farm on part of it, built greenhouses. So they were able, even when it was cooler oh, here, yeah. to keep things going that you usually didn't get and did so well at it that he wasn't just supplying the Flagler hotels, but up New York and that area, it would get right. nice and cold. They couldn't get things. And mm -hmm. we were sending strawberries and cucumbers up in those wow, early years of yeah. things they couldn't get. Right. So it, and that oranges. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Lots of citrus. And that's what eventually, you know, he started it. But then everybody said, this is a great place. This is a great place to be able to grow things and, you know, get the produce going. And, and it became it wow. became Hastings. I mean, that was what Hastings it was at, at its heyday. Hastings was filling 60 to 100 boxcars per day of potatoes. Wow. I mean, just huge, huge amount of produce yeah. going out of this town. Wow, a lot of workers too. Oh yeah. I mean, that stuff. And, uh, and all the side stuff, because it, it, if you have that kind of farm thing, you're, you're selling machines that are used, even if they're man-made machines pulled by horses or whatever, then you have horses and you have the feed, to the, you know, I mean, it oh, creates yeah. all these other side <laughs> industries. People just think someone just planning, no, there's a whole bunch of industries supporting that one process 
of growing potatoes. That's the fun of going back through these old newspapers. So I found, I, I don't know if you knew this, but Hastings had its own newspaper in the early 1900s. It was called the Hastings Herald. Okay. And because it was a big enough town. This right. was a big area for its time right. and had a lot of people and a lot going on. Well, you had that road, which was like oh, yeah. the main road, really. Oh, I'll tell you about the opening of that road in a minute. But um, when you went through the newspaper in the late 19-teens, early 20s, is when you were transitioning from the horses to mechanical items that would be able to work the farms. And some of the stories of people getting their understanding of how these machine works and how you can use this machine to do something in the field and how many horses you can take out of work. There are a lot of stories about it. They were doing big demonstrations of this is a tractor, here's how this tractor works, because it was all new to them. Stuff we take for granted, but it was all new and they were learning and they were transitioning. And so in the podcast, there a lot of times I'll be week after week, you'll hear about this demonstration and so-and-so actually has a tractor, you can see it in work or there's a moving picture showing this tractor going. And it's fascinating to read the things that were so exciting then that we would probably just walk right past. Oh, here's a question. Did they have a movie theater here? The movie theater was in Palatka. Oh, so they did drive okay. over to Palatka. Uh, okay. um, How far is Palatka from here, basically? How far is Palatka That's from here? That's a good... 20 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes. Yeah, by our vehicles. Yeah. But the vehicles back then, yeah, it took yeah. a little longer. So probably an so, hour, yeah. yeah. 45 minutes to an hour, horse and buggy. Hour, right. Yeah, it was, it was an all day uh, maybe, event. Yeah, maybe you have to stop and move a cow yeah. once well, later. Well, yeah, and you had, I mean, you had the early cars as well, but even, even when you had the early cars first, they didn't no. drive... They didn't drive like hour. we do. Model T's were still relatively slow, so right. they would have driven their Model right. T out of here in Hastings and right. driven to Palakovich, right. who could afford it. But you're thinking about good roads. Let me tell you, when you start going through these old newspapers and read about the roads, mm -hmm. there are stories that you think we have potholes? We've got nothing, right. nothing in comparison. Right. There were guys in here that they're telling a story of people that were stranded on a road 20 right. miles south of here, and they had to camp overnight and wait till the next morning to so somebody else might right. drive through right. and help them get their vehicle right. out of a rut of mud they sank into. Yeah, so, Such a different world. So carrying a shovel in your car or even a tent <laughs> Was was sort of a your part of your spare tire. It yeah. was. It yeah. really was. And even that didn't always get you out of the mud. Right. So yeah, that's crazy, crazy. Uh, now, how long have you been doing this Hastings podcast? I've been doing these since this summer. We a bunch okay, of us were so talking in the summer. Right. right. So now, uh, what you've done so far, is there one story that sticks in your brain, like? Darn, what is going on? And I would love to say it's something that's enlightening or very educational or gives you a grasp of history, but it's not. It is the story I have been asked about the most of everyone I've done, and it's about a cocaine addicted donkey. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, what was so, it? Co cocaine, so cocaine bear? Was they the they called the him. Donkey. They called yeah. him a coke fiend, and I, I kind of I wish I knew where That's the so article's funny. in here, but. Um, the, the crux of the story was there was a gentleman in town by the name of Harry Humphreys and he had a lot of animals, he did a lot of buying and selling, and he had a donkey that he gave a bottle of Coca-Cola to at the right, end of the day. Cocaine it didn't always, oh. in that time period, it didn't necessarily have cocaine. So before okay. 19, I want to say it was 1908, before 1908 it had cocaine in it. Okay. Between 1908 and the 1920s, the different bottling companies decided the percentage up to a certain percentage. Uh, okay. And that's, that comes into play in this story. So they, the story went that he could not get this donkey to come in for the night until he gave him a bottle of Coca-Cola. And so, he, but he owned, the donkey only wanted the bottles that were bottled in Palatka. They tried to give him different bottles, he didn't want them. Okay. They tried to give him different sodas, he didn't right, want them. Right. Which made the assumption that perhaps Palatka had that higher percentage of cocaine in yeah, their yeah, Coca-Cola yeah. at the time. And as soon as the donkey got it, he'd come in the barn and go to bed. Oh, <laughs> so. boy, that's so funny, that's so funny. Yeah, I can say, there's a popular movie uh, this last year called Cocaine Bear, so they could call Cocaine Donkey here. Right. That'd be funny. <laughs> But, but no, it's amazing all these little town stories that, huh? And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you feel you have enough content to keep on going? We, I have at least five more years of the Hastings Herald. Oh so you've got at least God. five more years of content. Oh, wow. so, <laughs> and it's fun. And some of this, I'm, I, as I read these stories, 
uh, actually fascinating is also the editorials. Mm -hmm. You know, we think how far we've come in a hundred years. Not really. They were still complaining about teacher salaries being right. too low right. and um, people not getting out to vote. Right. It's amazing when you look back, because I'm doing right. this week in history. Right. So when I do these articles from a hundred years ago, it's a hundred years ago right. this week. Yeah. They're, they're dealing with the same things yeah, we're yeah. still dealing with. That, that doesn't surprise me because uh, when I read Plato's Republic, he, he, was, he was complaining about corrupt politicians this 5,000 years ago, you know, yep. the Greeks. I said, really? So, so, so I'm not surprised that it's, uh, the, the commonality of problems, salaries, uh, yeah. education, whatever, scandals a preacher runs with someone's wife. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> I haven't found that. those yet, but okay. we'll, we'll talk about but them when we do. Have you, have you come to a part of um, a gentleman I had here, uh, the pastor, Pastor Thomas, was talking about a fire that destroyed part of the town. I'm doing the early 1900s. Oh, that okay. was a little later. Okay. So, and there were two different, I know there were two different fires because oh, I've been wow. talking to a lot of the folks that have been around here. One in the 80s, there was one in the 80s and there was one earlier. Um, 1980s, 1980s. 1980s, there was a, se a second fire that took a lot of what was left of downtown away in the 1980s. Wow. So I know there were a couple different fires that have really completely devastated downtown Hastings. Wow. Yeah, see, I wasn't aware of that. But, um, so what's the future? What's the future? Well, we're going to do more of these. I try to every week do what was in the newspaper 100 plus years ago this week. Um, and we're also going to start sitting down with some of the folks that have still have those stories and really start trying to take the old photographs and the people that were there that remember, you know, I remember this person in this building. I remember what's, uh, what, you know, and get those stories together and put those videos together for people to have that history going forward. Well, I thank you so much, and uh, just where can we listen to these podcasts? If you go to the Hastings Main Street uh, website or Facebook page, they're, they're posted on there weekly. Thank right. you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right.